The herring Clupea herengus is a teleost from the Clupeiforms order. The herring's body is divided into three parts head, trunk, and tail. The head bears the mouth and the paired sensory organs, the nostrils and the eyes. The mouth is defined by two lips held by the jaws. Located above the mouth, the nostrils only play an olfactory function for the fish. The eyes have no eyelids. Behind the eye, in a lateral position, are visible the opercula, ossified flaps covering and protecting the gills. During the breathing process, water comes out through the operculum slit, the gill aperture. The herring has no lateral line, a sensory organ present in most tiliosts. The herring's body is covered with bony dermal scales. These scales, thin and flexible, overlap one another in a head-to-tail direction. The scale structure can be observed using the binocular microscope. The herring scales are called cycloid because of their rounded outer edge. The cranial part of each scale is covered by the caudal part of the previous one. The scales are covered with concentric ridges of different sizes as well as radiating ridges. Pigments and crystals are present on each scale and give the animal its color and metallic sheen. In the terminal part of the trunk, on the ventral position, we can see the anal and urogenital papilla. This is where the digestive, reproductive and excretory systems arrive. The herring has both unpaired and paired fins. They are flexible and held by bony fin rays, the lepidotrichia. The unpaired fins are located on the median plane of the animal. There are three different types of unpaired fins. The dorsal fin, the anal fin, located behind the anal and urogenital papilla, and the caudal fin. The homocircle caudal fin is made of two identical and symmetrical lobes. The herring has two sets of paired fins. The anterior fins, or pectoral fins, are located behind the opercula. The posterior fins, or pelvic fins, are located on the ventral side in front of the anal and urogenital papilla. The skeleton is divided into four parts. The cephalic skeleton, or skull, the axial skeleton, which includes the spine and the ribs, the zonal skeleton, corresponding to the pectoral and pelvic girdles, and the appendicular skeleton, formed by the bones and the fins rays. The skull and the spine protect the central nervous system structures, the brain, and the spinal cord. To see the internal organization of the herring, open the abdominal cavity with scissors. To do so, 
make an incision just ahead of the anal and urogenital papilla. From this slit, cut the skin and the muscles on the medioventral side up to the base of the operculum. Then go along the left flank towards the back and cut the mediolateral side towards the tail up to the anal fin. Go around the anal and urogenital papilla and remove the whole muscle section. The herring is then put on its right flank on the dissecting pan. Then cut the operculum and the left lower mandible in order to see the gills. Finally, cut the chest belt between the gills and the trunk of the animal. The rest of the dissection is made in water. Fix the herring in place with pins, one in the dorsal fin, one in the head, and one in the base of the caudal fin. To see the organs located in the abdominal cavity, lift the left gonad up, cut the blood vessels located in the anterior part, fold the gonad back and pin it, keeping in place the canal that links it to the anal and urogenital papilla. The following structures are now visible. The heart, the gonads, the liver, the digestive tract, and the gas bladder. The gas bladder or swim bladder is a silver-colored organ located in the dorsal part of the abdominal cavity. Its main role is hydrostatic. The air inside serves to maintain neutral buoyancy. The swim bladder is connected to the stomach by a canal the pneumatic duct. A second bladder duct enables the evacuation of the gas through the anal and urogenital papilla. Teleosts breathe using gills located in the posterior region of the buccal cavity near the pharynx. The herring has four pairs of gills on each side implanted in a cavity protected by an operculum. To see the gills, cut out the operculum, the left mandible, and the chest belt located behind the gills. Each gill is held by a bony gill Those archers have gill rakers with hooks Gill arches define five pairs of gill slits But only the first four arches bear gills Each gill consists of two parallel rows of filaments. Each filament is made of dozens of thin gill lamellae. This structure provides a very large surface for respiratory exchange. Gill ventilation is assured by alternately opening and closing the mouth and the opercula. Water goes in through the mouth 
and comes out through the operculum slits. The respiratory movement is performed in two steps. During the first step of the respiratory cycle, water is inhaled by opening the mouth and lowering the floor of the buccal cavity. The opercula are closed. During the second step of the cycle, the mouth closes. Water is pushed backwards by raising the floor of the buccal cavity and exits through the opercula that open up. During each cycle, water comes into the mouth, passes through the pharynx, flows through the gill slits and passes by the gills lamellae to finally come out through the gill aperture. As in all vertebrates, teleosts have a closed circulatory system and a heart. The heart is ventral and located behind the pharynx. It's divided into four parts. The sinus venosus, the atrium, the ventricle and the bulbus arteriosus. The circulatory system is a single circuit. The blood, loaded with carbon dioxide coming from the head and other body parts, reaches the sinus venosus. Then it flows into the atrium, which sends it to the ventricle. The ventricle contracts to propel the blood into the bulbus and the ventral aorta. The blood going through the heart is therefore venous blood. The ventral aorta ramifies in four pairs of aortic arches. The blood reaches the gills through the afferent branchial arteries, which capillarize in the gill filaments. The oxygenated blood leaves the gills through the efferent arteries, which fuse into a unique dorsal aorta. This aorta ramifies to irrigate the head and the other organs. This cast of a teleost circulatory system reveals the sets of veins and arteries of the animal. The herring feeds upon planktonic crustaceans and fish larvae. It has a complete digestive tract from the mouth to the anus. This digestive tract is divided into several regions. The pharynx, the esophagus, the stomach, the pyloric cica and the intestine. There are also accessory glands, the liver and the pancreas located alongside the intestine. The liver partially covers the esophagus and the stomach. To see them, pull the liver down and cut the tissues underneath the esophagus. The gallbladder is now visible. Then, uncoil the digestive tract at the level of the pyloric cacae. Cut the connective tissues behind the stomach. Pull the pyloric cacae down and pin the stomach. The whole digestive tract is now visible. The mouth is in the anterior position. It's defined by jaws with small teeth. The fleshy tongue has very little mobility. The funnel-shaped buccal cavity opens on the pharynx. 
Near the pharynx, the gill rakers, coupled with the gill arches, canalize the food towards the esophagus. The esophagus joins the stomach without any visible demarcations. The stomach has a lateral diverculum, the spur stomach, which links the stomach to the gas bladder through the pneumatic duct. The gallbladder pours the bile into the intestine through the bile duct, which leads to the junction between the stomach and the intestine, the pylorus. Several dead-end diverticula are located around the pylorus. The appendixes, or the pyloric cacae, used to store and digest the food. The digestive tract continues with the intestine alongside the medioventral side of the animal. The terminal part of the intestine, the rectum, ends with the anus at the anal and urogenital papilla. The teleost digestive system includes accessory glands, the liver and the pancreas. It's hard to distinguish and isolate the pancreas from the adipose tissues which surround the intestine. In the abdominal cavity, next to the intestine, is located the spleen. This is an organ belonging to the immune system and not to the digestive system. The urinary system is located on the dorsal side beneath the spine. It's composed of the kidneys and the excretory ducts. Nitrogenous waste is excreted in the form of ammonia. To see the kidneys, move the gas bladder down and cut the tissue that covers the kidneys with scissors. The kidneys are two elongated masses that fuse on the median plane. They continue towards the back of the animal with two ureters that must be isolated with caution, starting from the anal and urogenital papilla and going up to the kidneys. In their posterior parts, the ureters fuse into a urinary bladder. The urinary bladder leads to the anal and urogenital papilla. To see the reproductive system, open the abdominal cavity. Herrings have separated genders. They are gonochoristic, but there's no sexual dimorphism. In both genders, gonads have an elongated shape. Mature females have red-orange and granular-looking ovaries. Males have light-colored testes with a milky aspect. Gonad size is variable and depends on the sexual maturation of the animal. To observe the reproductive system, lift the gonad up, fold it back, and pin it. Alongside the gonads are visible the gonoducts, the oviducts for the female and the sperm ducts for the male. The gonoducts fuse in their distal part and open into the anal and urogenital papilla. Gametes are released into the sea for external fecundation. The reproductive period begins in November and ends in January.